Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about the center of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and the black hole right in the middle known as Sagittarius A star. And in this video you're going to actually get to see what it's like to be at the center and what it really looks like according to the scientists. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this is actually based on a very interesting study uh, where the scientists looked at very unusual stars around the central black hole and uh, looked at their interaction. And using this interaction, they created this very, very cool video completely in 360 where you're basically right in the middle of our galaxy and what you see around you are various stars and uh, various types of radiation that those stars emit and um, all of this is actually done using data that was collected over several years. Now what's interesting is that this is obviously not in real time, this is like hundreds of years of uh, stars emitting stuff, but for the most part it actually looks really really cool and very unusual. Now this is not all I wanted to show you in this video and as a matter of fact you can just watch this video by yourself in the link in the description below. What I really wanted to do is to show you um, first of all what uh, Sagittarius A star looks like in Space Engine and kind of explain how these scientists were able to even discover all of this data and uh, imagine what it might be like to be right here in the middle and look around you and see those beautiful stars orbiting. So first of all, let me just accelerate time here a little bit just so we can actually see uh, stars orbit around us. Uh, there's actually quite a few stars in this particular region and many of them we know very, very well. But uh, here we go. So this is kind of what um, this particular video from Chandra Observatory um, shows you. So it shows you the motion of those stars. So how exactly were they able to imagine this? Well, turns out um, if you study a very specific type of a star known as Wolf Rayet star, about which I talked about maybe two years ago, you can actually study the layout of a specific region of space. Okay, let me let me backtrack a little bit just to kind of give you an idea what I'm talking about here. So, what exactly is a Wolf Rayet star for those of you who are not familiar with them? Let's go to one of them. This is actually the closest to our um, solar system, known as Theta Moschei. Um, this particular object is a typical star. It's, you know, if you look at it, it does, it does behave like a star, it looks like a star, but there is one difference. These stars are actually uh, known to emit unusual wavelengths that don't seem to make any sense or don't exist in other stars. In other words, these stars are kind of fluorescent. You know the stuff that glows in the dark? Well, these stars do that too. And the reason they do this is actually very, very unusual. I'm going to demonstrate this in Universe Simbox in a few seconds. Now, um, what we know about this particular object is that in visual light, um, the wolf Rayet stars are not particularly bright. As a matter of fact, if you were to look at them using a telescope, you wouldn't really possibly even see one. But in ultraviolet light, they shine really, really, really brightly. As a matter of fact, they are some of the brightest stars you can see with ultraviolet uh, telescope. So, uh, they do seem to emit unusual light. Now, let me just show you what's actually happening here. So, in the middle we have what's known as a wolf Rayet star core. It's basically a typical star um, that was very, very massive, but as it's slowing down its burning of hydrogen process, and basically starts burning carbon and oxygen and so on, it kind of forms this core and a lot of the outer shell starts being thrown away into the outer space and in this case it forms a kind of an envelope or I guess you could call it almost like a nebula around the star. So we're going to try to create this right now using the Universe Sandbox. So here we're just going to release a bunch of particles and so these particles are essentially the outer shell of the star. And as they start escaping the star, the inner core starts burning really, really bright, really, really powerfully. And a lot of its emissions start influencing these particles. 
And as these particles get excited by the radiation from the inner core, they start emitting other types of light. So this is what we would call fluorescence. So in other words, this whole outer shell starts glowing in light that wouldn't be possible otherwise. And as this happens, this whole thing becomes really, really, really bright in ultraviolet light and also creates this very unusual environment where you have very super hot, super bright central core and a kind of an outer shell that covers it and starts glowing because of it. Now, this is what we would call this whole thing would be Wolf Riot Star. And Wolf Riot Star is actually an intermediary stage in the evolution of very large, very massive stars. Usually right after this stage finishes, um, the typical next step would be a supernova that would then result either in a neutron star in the middle or in a black hole. For this reason, because this stage doesn't last very long, we normally don't see very many of these stars. There's only a few uh, dozens or just under a hundred that we've discovered and we don't normally um, detect very many of them. But near the central region of our galaxy, specifically very, very close to Sagittarius A star, within about two light years or 1.5 light years, the scientists were able to discover at least 20 of them. And this is really cool because we were able to find these very rare, very unusual stars orbiting in this region around Sagittarius A um, star, which is our central black hole. Now, that's not all. As these stars orbit and as they basically release more and more of those uh, shells that I just showed you, basically as their outer shells get released um, from the inner core, and it's kind of hard to see it here, but what I'm trying to show you is this. Those shells or those released uh, particles, those materials, start to interact with each other. So right about maybe now, I'm going to try to see if I can make this a little bit more visible right around now, they're going to actually intersect with each other and collide with each other. So I decided to change the simulation a little bit just to show it to you in more detail. So anyway, so as these pulses collide with each other, they create shock waves. And these shock waves are super, super hot, super highly energetic, and they actually create a lot of emissions that we can detect from our planet Earth. And this is exactly what happens here. So as these Wolf Riot emissions collide with each other and create shock waves that we can detect from Earth, uh, we can actually use this data and the interaction of these shock waves with the central black hole to create these very, very cool looking, very, very cool looking, very beautiful simulations that the Chandra telescope was able to create. So here, all of this is created entirely from the data collected from those Wolf Riot stars. And this entire simulation demonstrates to you how we can actually use uh, the data from these unusual collisions of these very rare stars to basically lay out and create a, a very realistic, very cool looking map of not only the central um, galaxy or basically the central region of our Milky Way, but actually pretty much anything. So in other words, we could totally use the data from these stars to um, map out the entire galaxy at some point and know exactly where certain gravitational anomalies are, where certain black holes might be hiding, and most importantly, create a very interesting uh, visual map of our galaxy that could then be used in the future to explore it, of course. So this is yet another technique that we can use to create uh, maps of stars, galaxies, and of course, other regions of space. Well, anyway, check out the video I posted and I showed you in the video. This is a video from the Chandra Observatory. It's really cool, it's in 360 and you get to actually see all of it in a lot more detail. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.